You're with Julian on the Brownlow and the second of this show's four on the Israel-Palestinian conflict. And this one is looking at the oft-touted notion of Israel's right to defend itself. Premier President Joe Biden said he didn't think Israel's attack on Gaza has been a significant overreaction. He expressed his unwavering support for Israel's right to defend itself, something he had today backed away from a little bit. From rocket attacks in Gaza, didn't contend Israel's airstrikes uh, that are killing civilians. By only stepping in to name Hamas's actions and refusing to acknowledge the rights of Palestinians, Biden reinforces the false idea that the Palestinians instigated this cycle of violence. This is from AOC. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, one of the preeminent lights of politics on the progressive side in America. You would never hear a statement like that, even from Democrats, even up to the last election. This is not neutral language. It takes a side, the side of the occupier. Secretary of State Sir Anthony Blinken declared that there's a fundamental difference between a terrorist organisation in Hamas that's indiscriminately targeting civilians and Israel, which is defending itself. But the vast majority of Israel's targets have been civilians, and the vast majority of those killed Palestinians. Moreover, as an occupying power, Israel cannot use military force against the occupied Palestinian people because under international law, the occupier has a duty to protect the territory it occupies. And that is actual international law. Believe it or not that you have a duty of care over the nations that you occupy and the treatment of them, uh, unless you want to be committing uh, crimes against humanity. The International Criminal Court is uh, investigating Israeli war crimes from the, the last major conflab. Uh, Fatou Ben Souda, chief prosecutor for the International Criminal Court, announced that her office was launching a formal investigation into war crimes in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and Gaza, uh, from 2014's Operation Protective Edge, in which Israeli forces killed 2,251 Palestinians, including 500 children. And I believe the death toll for the Israeli civilians in that was something like under 20. And there was about 60 soldiers killed inside Gaza. Um, this is a great piece, and you can find it on Znet, the best online resource for alternative news media, which uh, links together pieces from a wide range of famed authors like Noam Chomsky and alternative media sites like Truth Out and Fire Dog Lake and Common Dreams and Democracy Now! And you'll find everything on there that's actually true. Um, and this is from Marjorie Cohen, a great writer which i'm interpolating into this bit under the icc rome statute inhumane acts committed in the context of an institutional regime of systematic oppression and domination by one racial group over another racial group with the intent to maintain that regime constitutes the crime against humanity of apartheid uh, the National Lawyers Guild sent a delegation in 2001 to Israel and the occupied territories and published a report documenting a system of apartheid 20 years ago. Richard Falk, who I featured last week, uh, former UN Special Rapporteur, uh, found beyond a reasonable doubt Israel's treatment of Palestinians constitutes the crime of apartheid. Even South Africa has come out and bashed Israel for the crime of apartheid. And the idea that there is this unwavering Jewish support is garbage. There is so many different Jewish organizations in America, globally, and within Israel that have been on the left of this issue supporting Palestinian human rights uh, and the people's treatment in Gaza and, and the West Bank for decades. And the Western media ignores all of them. Uh, Bet Salem um, issued a report. The Israeli human rights group Bet Salem issued a report in January this year. A regime of Jewish supremacy from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. This is apartheid. And I mentioned Human Rights Watch's report two weeks, three weeks ago now, charging Israeli leaders have committed the crime of apartheid. And that's the first time that Human Rights Watch one of the world's most respected body on human rights has accused him of that. 
<laughs> one of the most annoying justifications for what goes on here, I live in Australia. If Indonesia invaded Australia and forced us to live under their occupation with no rights whatsoever, no one would say that we were terrorists for fighting back. These are an occupied people. They're not allowed to go anywhere. They have lesser rights than Jewish Israelis. They are tormented daily. Their buildings are bombed with impunity. Their entire lands are regularly stolen. They aren't allowed to stick up for themselves without being called terrorists. Under international law, the Palestinians have a lawful right to resist Israel's occupation, including through armed struggle. In 1982, the United Nations General Assembly reaffirmed the legitimacy of the struggle of peoples for independence, territorial integrity, national unity and liberation from colonial and foreign domination by all available means, including armed struggle. And that's the United Nations saying that. The Biden administration is claiming that Israel is acting in self-defense against Hamas rockets, but under international law, Israel is an occupying force and doesn't have the right to use military force in self-defense against its occupied territory. Uh, it's always deceptive to treat the oppressor and the oppressed as equal. In the current situation, uh, the oppressor acts contrary to applicable international law and elementary mor morality, while the oppressed is countering by exercising rights of resistance and suffering the deprivation of basic rights. Of course, the tactics of resistance should be scrutinised by reference to legal and moral constraints, but without losing sight of overwhelming structures of dominance and far greater harm done by state violence. And the Biden administration is at a crossroads, and I'll be looking at how that changing crossroads in um, probably the next bit. Um, an individual can be convicted of a war crime or a crime against humanity under the Rome Statute if he or she aids, abets, or otherwise assists in the commission or attempted commission of the crime, including providing means to do so. The US government gives $3.8 billion a year to Israel, 90% of which is spent on mainly American bombs. They're not, under their own, under their own laws, allowed to sell weaponry to any other nation on earth that behaves like Israel or contravenes human rights abuses. Um, countries that receive US military aid can only use weapons for legitimate self-defense and international security, according to the Arms Export Control Act in America. Uh, military units that commit human rights abuses are prevented from receiving US weapons or training. Moreover, the Foreign Assistance Act of 1961 prohibits US assistance to any country which engages in a constant pattern of gross violations of internationally recognized human rights. US military aid to Israel violates all three of those wars.